welcome everyone tonight, this afternoon I should say, on this beautiful day the Lord has made. I'm Jim Pruitt, I'm the Deputy Judge Executive of Pike County, and I'm very happy to be here at the dedication of the Fire Training and Community Center here on Big Creek. I'd like to call on, the, on Pastor Bill Van Sant Jr. of the Highland Presbyterian Church to, to bring our invocation. Let us pray. Oh God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you today that you are our Heavenly Father. And we thank you for this beautiful day and this special occasion that is so significant for our community. We're grateful that those who founded our country heard your call and acted with faith and trust and did your work. You have reminded us in your word that blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Our Lord's servant, Paul, wrote that good government is a ministry of God. We thank you for all those who are working in our community and throughout our land to serve you by serving and helping the people of their communities. Be with us through all these ceremonies today. And above all, we will give you the honor and praise for whatever success we have. In our Lord's name I pray, amen. I'd like to ask everyone to stand as we are led in the Pledge of Allegiance to the Flag of the United States of America by Jonathan W. Hires. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. I'd like to ask any public official that is present, that is not on the program, to please stand for your recognition. We have any public officials here? Thank you for coming. And I saw one former public official, my dad would shoot me if I didn't recognize. Do you, you stand, Mr. Dameron? <laughs> it's now my privilege to introduce to you the County Judge Executive of Pike County, Wayne T. Rutherford. I want to welcome you all here to, to this occasion today. Uh, my connection with this community goes back a number of years. What I want to do today is uh, have a moment of silence. We lost three farmers in the county, two in a far at Fed Creek, and Mr. Atkins here on the way to fight a far. I, and I also want to mention all of those who, members of this fire department that has that have gone on. My grandpa used to say, Charles, that we drink water that a well somebody else has dug, and that is so true. But I want to have a moment of silence for Mr. Atkins, and we, th we think about Trooper Clifton, and we think about Trooper Leonard, who was, who was so active in this community and, and this far department. Uh, moment of silence, please. In 1969, I didn't know what the Lord had in store for me, but I was elected to be Chief Executive of Pike County, Kentucky. And when I came in office, um, county budget was $146,000. I remember uh, uh, Madam Finance Director, that we handled probably after the 2010 flood about $57 million. Government is so complicated, and I, I read in a United Mine Worker journal about in Montana where they were talking about passing what's called a severance tax. So I got in my car and drove to Frankfurt and had an opportunity to appear before the Appropriation Committee of the of the Kentucky legislature of a joint session 
in the House and Senate. And I said to him, I'm from Energy Rich Pike County. The Lord has put, has put uh, oil, natural gas, and coal in the bowels of our mountains. But we're like a third world country, folks. We don't live the way you all live in the rest of this commonwealth. And I want you to pass a coal severance tax. And I told him, I said, we produce more coal than any county in Kentucky. We produce 53%, I don't know what percentage was really at that time. Today we produce 53% of the natural gas in the Commonwealth. But I told them that we wanted good schools, we wanted a good transportation system, medical, and we wanted fire protection. Folks, you only had a fire department at that time, Elkhorn City and Pikeville. So, we, we had a lot of catching up to do and a lot of development to do. I couldn't get the severance tax passed that session. But the following session when the greedy governor and greedy legislators from out of the coal fields realized how much money it'd bring into the coffers of state government. Had no trouble next time getting it passed. And we got it passed and they gave us back 4%. 4%. Today, we get back 12%, but folks, coal severance tax is what built this building, what bought the fire trucks, other than what money has been raised in the community and the work that the foreman has done in this particular fire department. But uh, we talked about the development. We put in a comprehensive plan back then, in the early 70s a plan that we could follow and start developing the county, start providing these services. You had no, you had no public water system. Uh, Marbone water system, the only one you had, and it was in bankruptcy. We took it out of bankruptcy. We established water, water districts all over the county. And we began talking about covering the largest county in Kentucky, 783 square miles, with people to have potable water in their home. And, it, and we now can tell you that we're in about 99.7 of the homes in this county. And when you go to the other counties in Eastern Kentucky, which are small counties, uh, they're not even close to that. That was because of our legislators who, who got 50% of the severance tax Folks, you don't realize it, but give you 19 uh, at 08, $355 million from coal severance tax that, that our coal miners and our drillers for natural gas put in the coffers in Frankfurt. 50% of that comes off the top, goes in the state budget to be spent in 119 counties. The legislature and their good causes, then the, they get the other 50%, and then, of course, we get 12% 12, 12 of that. But folks, this year is here because this is where that money ought to be spent. But I, I told those people that, uh, and I can remember testifying in Atlanta, Georgia at an EDA hearing in regard to the <coughs> development of Pikeville. Our county seat it has a very progressive government, same as your county government has here. I testified in Atlanta and I said, what Pikeville has in their comprehensive plan is they wanted Pikeville and Pike County to be the hub of Central Appalachia. We want it to be the medical. We want it to be the financial. We want it to be the educational. And what is it today? Look at it. You got a medical center, $146 million expansion just completed. You got University of Pikeville. Folks, you have a medical school in Louisville. We travel this country, travel this country telling the story about what is here. And we talk about 300 doctors at a hospital in rural Kentucky and 90% of them specialists. Specialists, you don't have to go anywhere with any disease you have other than the Pikeville Medical Center with an affiliation with Mayo Clinic. So we have been blessed financial institution, community trust bank. 
Berlin Coleman came to me and said, I want to use county revenue bonds to build a new bank building. And I said, I don't know about that. The, the newspapers would really get on me if our physical court and if the state would let us would use our seventh tax to build a bank. Let me tell you what Berlin Coleman said to me. They only had three branches and the bank in Paco at that time. He said, Judge, we're going to expand. We're going to expand in Kentucky, in this Commonwealth. We're going to go into West Virginia. We're going into Tennessee. And I said, Mr. Coleman, if you'll give me your hand that you will leave the headquarters of that bank in Pike County in Pikeville, Kentucky, I will take the flack from your state papers. And of course, we funded, we, we let them have the revenue bonds. And I think at that time it was 1.9%. And they built, their, they built their headquarters here. They're still here today. They're the third largest bank in this Commonwealth. University of Pikeville, medical school in Louisville, medical school in Lexington, medical school in Pikeville. Autometry school. Folks, there are only 22 autometry schools in the United States. Closest one to us is Memphis, I think, Charles. And think about that, 125 new jobs coming to come to University of Pikeville. Uh, the city manager and I had supper with three of the people, one from Seattle, Washington, one from St. Louis, and one from Florida. And the one from St. Louis happened to be on the accreditation committee that approved the medical school for Pikeville. He told those other two in our presence that these people can pull this off. Look what they've done to the medical school with Dr. Boozer and with Governor Patton and then President Hurley. So folks, we have been blessed in this county. All of us have been blessed to be able to be born here in this beautiful area, to raise our family. And the, the Lord has truly blessed us. And what a beautiful area we live in. I'm an eighth generation Pike County. Many of you folks are, are seventh and eighth generation. But folks, this is what government's about. You're gonna see the day, today the cooperation between a county government, a Pike County physical court, and our state legislators. You're gonna see a community involved in, in what you want, of what you want. Rick Green and the board over here, and I know Doug Tackett and I, and Doug are going to speak here in a few minutes, but we came here in the, in the 2009 flood, and we couldn't even get down here. It was in this facility. We stopped on the road up there, and I, I'll, I'll never forget that. I was impressed by these young people, how many there was out here that day, day of, in this fire department. Folks, but we had to come back just one year later, and how sad it was. We had to come back over here in another flood, back to back, the only in the United States in the last 14 years where you had back to back floods. So, uh, and we are very resilient when we have a flood. Our people build back. We've been blessed as a physical court to get $7 million to move people out of the floodplain, and we're doing that. Jeannie, my chief of staff, is the head of the NRCS program. Jimmy Kaiser and Summit Engineering is the head of the FEMA program. We're moving people today out of the floodplain. It's going to take millions of dollars. We're looking for more money, hopefully coming this next year, to keep moving people out. I testified in Washington more than one time over the years, trying to impress on FEMA an agency that I testified almost three months after the 77 flood. HUD, Housing Urban Development, was the coordinator. And we went, Johntown, Pennsylvania had the worst flood and lost more people two weeks after the 77 flood here. They showed up in Washington and I testified before a committee of the House and the Senate and said, folks, move these people out of the floodplain. What have they done all these years? They give people 29-9, let them clean up and move right back in it. 
Jenny knows that we have most of the people in the flood this time had been flooded either four or five times. Enough money to move them out of the floodplain. But what we're here today is, is here today for a community that is a striving community here in Pike County and to let you all know that we as public officials, that we are concerned about you and that we care about you and we care about your safety, we have 700 certified farmen that are certified in this county and this year is one of the best fire departments and I can say that and Doug probably be in trouble with 23 other ones but this year I know what they do, I know the training they get, I know the certification they have and I know the equipment you have. The equipment they have has to be done with your legislators and your county physical court and that's the reason that you see these trucks out here and there are other plans you probably hear about today. They were not through but folks, we couldn't be here today if it wasn't for Ken Dameron and Sandy. Folks, we got a bargain on the building over there. Ken said, I'm, we're part of this community. We're a part of this community. And we had this appraised. And, I, and it, I'm not saying that Ken don't know. He knows about the appraisal. Folks, we bought this way of below the appraised value. This, pro this property right over here. And that will be used as your community center. Rick will tell you about that, how you have access to it well, for anything you want in your community. We found that these fire departments, they bound these communities together. The 24 of them were about four branches, I believe, in this county. Went from zero up. And we was able, when we started our, our program, to, to buy a number of trucks and to help them get started. The county fiscal court puts a vast amount of your taxpayer's money every year. And to get you a lower insurance rate. Rick, we're always concerned about, about that as, as we move forward and do our planning. Uh, but today we're here to, to let you all know that state government our elected legislators and our, your county government is, is here for you all, but you all are the key to what happens in your community. This is an example here that anybody in this county can look at. We have good fire departments, as I've told you. Doug Tackett is our coordinator with your fire department in the county of emergency management. Uh, we are flood prone. We're number three in the United States since. Uh, 1953 to 213, we're number three in America on flooding. And so we can expect another sometime in the future because, but the Lord has been good to us. Our people are so resilient and he takes care of us. He gives us the wisdom. He gives me the wisdom to be able to stand up here and gives me the wisdom, Johnny Harris, to have compassion to people and to speak out to people that can't speak out for themselves and also to give me the wisdom to fight for the coal miner and these people that have been done wrong by over-regulation of the federal EPA. But I'm glad to be here with you all today, glad to be part of this program. I'm humbled to be here, really, but glad to be here in this facility and, and to watch your community thrive. Carl Napier couldn't be with us today. She had another meeting this afternoon she, she heads the, our, our senior citizen program. In the future, uh, her plans are in the future to locate a senior citizen center in this facility. So that's addition to your community center and the training center, far training center. In the future, you can look for a senior citizen center to be in this community. So, and, and, Johnny Hires, Jonathan W. Hires, and Johnny, I don't even think you, you have a, you sat over there. If you'll get up and go over here and look at this sign, you will see what, uh, what, uh, what we're going to do today. Right there. Now, how did we do on your signature? 
I think, yeah, they said you'd be kind of worried to see who did that one. You forge real life. You put real. <laughs> but, folks, right here is a fellow. Matter of fact, as I look around here, it's about the only one was here that I, some of you all may have been here. He's the only one I recognize was here when all this started. When there wasn't anything on this year. It was, he was here. And he is still here. He's still here, don't he? And that's the reason you see his signature above this. This is the Big Creek Community Center, but Jonathan W. Hars. And he deserved this. Uh, he, uh, that the reason he's worried, he's their money man. That's the reason he's getting worried and we got his signature figured out. But uh, he, does, he, he, he does the business end of it. These foremen, the, the chief and assistant chief and all the rest of them, uh, what a fire department you have organized. What a job you all did. What an awesome job you did. You're getting flooded yourself. You're getting flooded yourself and you was out helping people both in, in, on the 09 and 010 floods. It was, it was just something, and, and Doug and I talked about it that night when we went back. Senator Jones, if you remember, we met you on the 210 flood up on the road. Because we had to move, because it kept raising out here, and we moved up there, and we got up there and pulled in, and you were standing on the side of the guardrail, uh, looking over the guardrail. But, uh, I'm, I said I'm, I'm glad to be here with you all today, and God bless each one of you. Thank you, Judge Rutherford, for your leadership. I thought before we go on in the program, we ought to ask the, the department heads of your county government that are here to stand up for just a moment so you can see who all is here. Everyone's, everyone's a department head of your county government. Everybody stand up. And the governor's and the judge's executive staff. These people work, we work with every day, and they do a great job on your behalf, and they deserve some recognition. So we thank you. <laughs> Our next speaker represents us in the Kentucky State Senate. He's a fellow attorney and a person I respect a great deal. St the state senator from the 31st District, Senator Ray S. Jones II. Well, it's great to be here, and uh, this is something that a lot of people thought probably would never happen. And a lot of people worked really hard to make uh, this uh, fire training school, community center, and, and future senior citizen center reality. And as Johnny and I were just talking, this is one of the few areas of Pike County that is not served by a readily accessible senior citizen center. And if anybody should benefit from the coal severance tax, it should be the families of the people who mine that coal. There's no question about that. My grandparents uh, are all gone now, but in the last few years of my grandparents' life, uh, they were served by the Shelby Valley Senior Citizen Center. And I saw directly how important that program was, not only to my family, but to hundreds if not thousands of families across this county. And the people of this community deserve the same service from our senior citizens program as any other area of Pike County. Now for 14 years I've had the privilege of representing this county in the state senate. It's been a lot of work. It's been at times somewhat controversial. We've had to fight a major battle to keep our severance tax when we've had governors both Republican and Democrat alike try to come up with ways to use the severance tax to fill holes in the state budget. And Representative Keith Hall and I have worked diligently with House Speaker Greg Stumbo and House Majority Floor Leader Rocky Atkins and others, Representative Leslie Combs, to make sure that we protect the severance tax that's so vital to our communities. Because, you know, when you go, when I went away to law school at the University of Louisville, there were things, even in the worst parts of Louisville, that we didn't have a dream of getting. They had a fire hydrant on every corner. Every house had safe, clean drinking water. They had sewer. Large parts of Pike County had no access to those types of services. But because Keith and I have had the vision 
and the commitment to our rural communities in Pike County, about 98% of the homes in this county now have access to safe, clean drinking water. We have made massive investments in our sewer systems. And more importantly, we were the first, for the first time when Keith and I were elected in 2000, we started using coal severance tax money to help shore up our local fire departments and our senior citizen centers. At that time, our senior citizen centers workers had not had raises in about four years. They didn't know how they were gonna pay the health insurance for the employees in senior citizen centers. And we addressed that concern. Every fire department in Pike County has benefited from the coal severance tax money that we've appropriated. And let me tell you why I think that's important. I was here, I can't remember, Rick, if it was 2009 or 2010, when members of this fire department, and I can't remember if it was Dick's Fork or Mead House, when they did a swift water rescue, was it Dick's Fork? <laughs> I was up here that night when they did a swift water rescue and they pulled a lady out of a car that was trapped in, a, in, a, in, in the creek and if, she had, if the car had become dislodged or she had gotten out of the car, it would have been a fatality. It had a small child with her. And let me tell you something. When you see a fire department in a community this size that can provide the same type of life-saving services that you would see in a major urban area, that is truly remarkable. And it wouldn't have been possible if our county leaders and state leaders had not made the investment in our fire departments. Because let me tell you something. I don't live in this community, but I grew up in rural Pike County. But my wife and children, we sometimes come through here. And God forbid that we were ever to have an accident or to ever need the services of this fire department. You know what? It's there. And they're well equipped and they're well trained. And that, I don't know if it was that year or the next year, I stayed out with Rick till about 2 o'clock in the morning. And second flood. Rick and I were out till about 2 o'clock in the morning going out to check on people. And you know something? That's not because the firefighters in this department were being paid it's because they care and Keith Hall and I have worked hard to make sure that the that this fire department had the equipment and the facilities that they needed and Rick Green and John Hires both contacted me and they worked with Keith and I to secure the funding uh, not only for the community center and fire training school but for the addition here to the station I believe we funded a new truck and I made a commitment several years ago that as long as I had the privilege of serving in the state senate, I promised a friend of mine named Leroy Smith. He called me. Many of you remember Leroy. He called me and said, there's a meeting at the fire department tonight, and I want you to be there. And he explained to me and showed me the problems with the structure, and I made a commitment to him that as long as I had the privilege of serving in the Kentucky Senate, that this fire department, as well as every other fire department in Pike County, Kentucky, will be taken care of and that we would make sure that they had the resources and the severance tax that they needed to serve the people in their community. And I want to thank all of you for coming out here today because it shows how important that this service is, that this facility is to the people of this community. God bless you all and thank you very much. Thank you, Senator Jones. Now my privilege to introduce the state representative for the 93rd Legislative District, W. Keith Hall. Thank you, Thank you all. You know, I, as I sit here and I look and I see the great crowd, I think of many things and I think about the night of the flood, Rick, when me and Ray was here and how devastating it was. And I ponder uh, the service and the commitment to the volunteers. And I have some great young people in the back. And my mind goes back to the words of John F. Kennedy. That's not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Being a firefighter is a service. Uh, Rick Green and all the men here at Big Creek and women that play a role. And the preacher said these words, you know, where there is no vision, the people perish. It takes leadership. It takes vision. It takes goals. It takes priorities. And it takes a team effort. There's no I in team. And I can say to you that Ray Jones and I in our 14 years together have been a great team. We've never disagreed on co-severance funding. 
at the top of the list, it's always been fire departments first, senior citizen centers second. That's the two core values that Ray and I feel like that need the most help. And it's just a beautiful thing today. I've been here several times in the last few weeks as I've watched uh, Mr. Young from Brushy and his crew build this beautiful community center and how well it's, it's taken shape. The beautiful flag that flies today. And it, it truly is an honor uh, to be a servant of the people, to serve and to be your mouth and your voice and your eyes and ears. And I'm telling you, we fight and we fight and we fight for every dollar of co-severance that we can bring back to the county, that we can bring back to Pike County. It's so important that it affects you as when you get your insurance bills. And we have an ISO rating of 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And we get that lowered, Rick, to 7 or 5 today. That's a big impact on what you pay for insurance. If you don't have the infrastructure the fire department brings together, all this great equipment, all the rescue equipment, all the training they do, and you, you know, they do this without any pay. They do this as servants in those communities that benefit people like you and I. I can tell you this, Rhonda James and Judge Ruthford and I and his staff was in a meeting last Friday because at Phelps, Kentucky, we had a fire truck respond to a fire, and that fire truck blowed up in pursuit going there. And I don't know of a greater need and a greater thing than what we can do to get a new fire truck. Thank God for Doug Tackett. He called Kemper and said, Phelps don't have a fire truck. Can you loan them one while we get ready to buy them one for six months? I went to Hatfield Monday night. You know, they have $1,300 left in their account in the fire department. We have got to support the people that support us. We've got to stay behind our fire people and our fire departments. And one of the most critical things we do in funding is to support those people that take care of us. And I just want to say it takes great leaders like Rick Green, like Jonathan Hires, like the people that had vision to put together something that says this community has a anchor. They have a great fire department with state-of-the-art equipment. They have young people that's interested in making a new generation of firefighters. It's critical. And without that, you can't have the infrastructure in your life to prepare you for maybe a fire or a catastrophe or a rescue situation that Ray talked about. It takes a great team effort to bring all that together. I'm proud to be that one person on that team that has served Pike County that fights and fights and fights to bring back every dollar of co-severance to help us create better schools and better roads and better conditions but better fire departments with lower ISO rates that affects mine and your insurance and what we pay. And I, so my hat's off today to the leadership to you firefighters and what you do. I'm saying God bless you because what you do is a, is a great service to your fellow man and a great service what you do for your community. You all being here today on a hot muggy day is testimony of how important this is, how compassionate you are for these things. And I'm just telling you, I'm here. I will remain to be here to support Rick and the group of firefighters here at Big Creek. And it's, a, it's an honor. It's a pleasure, and I've been humbled to be your servant the last 14 years to work with Ray and Leslie and Speaker Stumbo and Senate President Stivers to get things for Pike County. God bless you all, and thank you for coming. Thank you, Representative Hall. The next fellow we've come to appreciate so very much, and in the, in the few months I've been over there, I found out he gives very accurate weather reports. <laughs> And he is also uh, serves Pike County and serves all the people as our emergency management services director and the head of the 911 program and helps arrange for notification of it when there's any kind of a disaster impending and is, is a first responder and deserving of tribute. 
So I'd like to call you up here to the program now, Doug Tackett. Lord, I don't know how to follow all these guys up here. It's a tough act to follow, but uh, let me say this. I know I've known Rick Green for a number of years. I don't know just how long we have known each other. <laughs> yeah, we better not go there. But anyway, I know it's been a dream come true for him for this community center to come together as a training center as well. Uh, not only is it going to benefit uh, the Big Creek Fire Department, but also other area departments like Hatfield and Belfry and Upper Pond and Turkey Creek, all those in this area of the county. And there's a lot of our firemen to get their training and the classes they need to keep their certifications and for the new firefighters to get their certifications, they travel around the county and sometimes out of county to get the training they need. But hopefully this will help keep more of them at home and they won't have to travel outside the county to get what they need to keep their certifications or to get their certifications. And we have a number of them. Like the judge said, we've got over 700 volunteer firemen in this county. And they're all very well trained. They have good equipment and they're getting better. But what makes the fire department the best it can be is the community support that they get. Because without community support, they're not as good as they could be with community support. Those that have community support like we see here today are flourishing with uh, what they need and, and the people they need to operate with. They have a good volunteer base. And they uh, are starting youth programs like Explorers for Firefighters. And those are working out very well for, I know, Belfry and others. Uh, it's working out very well for you too. A uh, number of young guys back here that I like to prank around with sometimes and uh, we get them in uh, training and uh, get them in rough spots if we can. But uh, they're all a great bunch of guys. Uh, there was a, uh, a movie line that the uh, guy said, the strange thing about firemen is they're always firemen no matter what. And that's true. Uh, it's a brotherhood. They're the first ones to go out when, when, it's, when the call goes out for help. They're the first ones there and they're running into a bad situation when other people run out. Uh, I, I can't say enough about the courage that I see in our volunteer firefighters all across this county, men and women alike. They're courageous, they're well trained, and they're ready to go. Some of the best, I put them up against anybody in the Commonwealth. I think we have the best that we can have and actually I think it's going to get better as time goes on with programs like Rick and the Community Center and I know it's been a dream come true for you. But uh, that's about all I can tell you right now, so uh, I'm going to sit down and let somebody else come up. Thank you all, and God bless you. You see how lucky we are to have our public safety protected by a man like this? Yes, we are. Our next speaker, you know well, as your community leader and the head of your volunteer fire department here at Big Creek. So like you... To welcome, especially warmly, your neighbor, the fellow without which none of this would happen, Rick Green. Okay, folks, thank you. I never know what to say at times like this, but uh, when he said it was a dream come true, he's right, it is. You know, I've asked for this for a long time, trying to get this community center put in here for us. And I've always felt like as big as community we have, why don't we have something? And you know, these two guys sitting here, this judge sitting behind me, Judge Ruthford, Keith and Ray, you know what, they put a lot of trust in me. And I don't know why sometimes, but you know, when I asked for help on this project, they just looked at me and said, do you need it? I said, yes. And they said, we're gonna get it for you, one way or the other. And they have, they always come through for me. Ray was talking about the floods a little while ago. That was probably one of the most devastating things that ever happened in our community. Uh, but you know, a lot of good arises out of bad sometimes. And, and we saw that. We saw a community pull itself together and come back. And we've done it twice, you know. I guess we didn't learn our lesson right the first time. We had to do it again. But we did it well. And I'm so proud of not just our firefighters, but our community. Our community is everything. Without that, we don't, we don't even need to be here. But, you know, the investment that these people have made in this fire department, you know, on that night of that flood was probably the worst night I've ever had. 
I thought everything I've worked for and Johnny Hires has worked for was in this fire department. And I came down here, the doors were open, we had to open them before the power went off, and our equipment was floating out the doors and down the road. And I thought, there's no way, we'll never come back. You know, with the economics like they are in the times. And you know, Ray came over and he rode around with me that night and he sat in the truck with me. And at the time, Keith couldn't get to us. So Keith's on the phone with us in the truck. And we're sitting in this truck riding around watching the waters come up and go down. And they, they, they said to me, I told them, I said, I feel like everything I've got is gone now. I said, this community will never come back from this. And they said, yeah, you will. Your people will pull together. And they said, anything you've lost over there, we'll put it back for you. Don't worry about that. Right now, you worry about taking care of those people. And that was a scary night for us because I really thought when the waters went down, we might even find some bodies. And thank the good Lord we didn't. And so many goods has come from that. Uh, these guys have stepped up since then, and they have invested in this community with, with this Cole Severance money and the judges' help. They've invested, I, I, I'm going to call figures like they are. They've invested $50,000 in a building expansion. They joined with us, put 100000 and we put 100000 into buying a brand new 2014 fire truck sitting out front. We replaced one that was 38 years old. And we were driving it, and we were making it but you know at any time that thing could have just got someone hurt but these guys did saw that and they went around it and we got what we needed and when i asked them for help this community center they dug deep and worked hard and i know how hard they had to fight to get this because let me tell you that coal severance money we know where it was at one time and we know where it's at now and it's nowhere near what it was but they pulled two hundred thousand dollars out to build this community center for you all and it is a fire training center what does that money mean to you all simple investments the building expansion allowed me to bring ISO in here, re-rate us, take us from a, a seven, eight down to a five. What's that mean to you? Average homeowner, 200 bucks a year, maybe more. Some, some cases, a lot more. Multiply that by all the houses in this area. And you take $50,000, they probably saved the community a million dollars a year. I couldn't really put a figure on it. I can't count that high. Johnny counts that high, I can't. So, you know, every investment they make, the new fire truck, that keeps our ratings down. You know, that's why we're a class five. I'm proud of that. We're the lowest in this district. And low is good when you're in the fire ratings, okay? We've got the lowest in the district. I'm really proud of that. Uh, but this equipment's why we've done it. And these guys here are why it's happening, okay? I don't know what I can say uh, any more about them than they're not just good politicians at what they do. They're good friends to me. I have their phone number, and they know I'll call them at 3 o'clock in the morning, too. So, I mean, what can I say about them? You know, they're wonderful guys. They care about this community. And they didn't make promises. They made things happen, okay? And these things happen, and you're here today because of them to see this. I'm so proud of that little community center out there. I know that there are community centers around here that make that look like a, an outhouse. But to me, it looks like a mansion. And I'm really proud of it. I thank you, Ken, for, for what you did, too. I, I keep bragging on Ken Dameron a little bit. Ken, we got something out of Ken nobody else could get. He lost money. He don't like that, but he's a good guy, folks, and I, I appreciate what he did on that. But, you know, you're all while we're doing that, and I just can't say thank you enough to each of you, and I want you all to remember these people. You know, I didn't come up here to be a politician. I didn't come up here to, to beg your votes or anything else, but I'm telling you the facts of what really happens in this area, where this money comes from, and what you see around us wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for these guys. I wouldn't have anything. We would be still a Class 8, you know, and we wouldn't have this community center, but we do. And I thank them from the bottom of my heart, not just for the community center and the equipment, but for being my friends. And Judge, you know, never, never could I ever ask for a better crew to work with. When the judge and I was talking about this community center, you know, we, we were talking about how many things have gotten done over here over the years, where we started out as a fire department. And you know, this thing wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Johnny Hires. Johnny is probably one of the best friends I've ever had or known. He, uh, he's going to look down so he make him feel modest there. But he's a, a wonderful guy. He, has, he was here on day one, and he's still here today. And it wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him, I promise you. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him because I'd be in trouble. Because my idea of balancing a checkbook is not very good. Johnny will vouch for that. I can spend money, but I'm not good at managing it. And Johnny's great at that, but he does a wonderful job. He wouldn't, this fire department wouldn't be, in fact, that bank building wouldn't even probably be over there if it hadn't been built by Johnny to bring this community more than what it had before. 
I remember in this little community wasn't a whole lot, but it's come a long ways. It really has. And, and this is the worst times. But to me, that community center is more than just a building. It's hope. It's, it's, it's a better tomorrow for you and your grandkids and your kids now. I mean, there's a place that they can go and, and have something, and, you know, you don't have to worry about them. We're going to do a lot more changes. A lot of things are coming out there that you haven't seen yet. All you're seeing right now is some remodeling inside and an addition built onto the side with some picnic tables. We're going to build you an amphitheater back into that hill where we can have entertainment. We can have... Uh, plays by kids, anything we want to do. We're going to try and come up with some playground equipment. We're going to do some different things for you. Uh, it's just starting. Believe me, it's, gonna, it's got a long way to go. This is a work in progress. And, and you know, if you go over and look at it now, don't be disappointed when you see that there's the floor covering and stuff isn't down yet, but it's coming, folks. It's just coming. It's just taking a little time. But we're going to make this thing something that you all be proud of. And I'm proud to live in this community. I've lived here all my life. And I just can't thank the people enough for the support they showed our fire department. They always, people ask me, they say, why don't you have roadblocks? Why don't you do these hot dogs? I said, I don't need to. I said, we get plenty. I said, our community supports us. We send out once a year, Johnny sends out a letter, and we get a support that keeps us operating. And I thank you for that. You know, it doesn't make me have to get out here and, and beg and plead for help. You show your support to us, and I know that support will be there. And believe me, it, it's on both sides. Uh, I, I apologize too for some of the not getting everything ready quick enough for you. I apologize for the mix-up in the time. I had the times crossed up. We supposed to, I told everybody this was at six o'clock, and it was four o'clock. But you know I, I'm not good with time sometimes. Uh, in fact, yesterday when we started cleaning some things up to get ready for this, we had a call we had to go out on. So, in fact, I got back at ten o'clock. I spent five and a half hours yesterday trying to get a guy off the top of a hill. You know that's the things we do, things you don't see. Uh, those young boys back there, they literally, you should pat them on the back every time you see them. They absolutely amaze me. You know, I hear so many people say bad things about young people. Well, apparently they're not looking over here. Those guys over there, I mean, when I ask them to do something, they don't give me any lip about it. They go do it, you know. And when, they go, when the times get rough, bad, or when the uh, situation looks bad, they, that's when they show their best. And they come through every time for me. So don't. Don't put them off as young people are all bad or that they're all out here running up and down the road wasting their parents' money. They're not all like that. You've got some young men in this area that you should be proud of. And I know those back there are. And I know you should be proud of everybody in this line up here from Doug Tackett on down. I don't know what this county would do without Doug Tackett. You all will never know, you know, what he does. I don't know when he sleeps. I really don't. I have no idea when Doug sleeps. Uh, if he sleeps, I don't know. But, I mean, if there's an emergency going on in this county, he's there. Or he knows about it. Or he's working with it. I mean, well, he's not every little cat in the tree, but he's at 90% of it. And I don't know how he does it. I, and I don't know why he does it. Because I, I certainly couldn't handle it. I would go nuts with all that load on me. And he's done tremendous things, too, in this county. For uh, He's helped grants. Uh, Charles over there works with him. Charles has gotten so many grants. Charles has gotten several grants that helped this fire department a long way. Huh? Charles? Yeah. See the big guy standing over behind the fan, the smart one who got behind where it was cold? He's got this county $2 million in federal grants. Thanks, Charles. Thank you, buddy. He's, he's, he's a great guy. But I won't take up any more of your time. And I hope you take advantage of the community center. It's open to you. You got a birthday party. Hopefully we'll see a senior citizen moving in soon. Right now, you know, birthday party, family reunion, anything you want to do, let me know. It's all I ask. It's not going to cost you a dime. I'll ask you a little deposit. So if you leave it the way you find it, you get it back. That's all I got to ask because I got to have somebody clean it up. And I got enough things to do besides keeping that clean. So just let me know anytime you want to use it, folks. It's open to you. And I hope you take advantage of it. Uh, we have uh, a lot of community get-togethers twice a week, twice a month, I'm sorry, not twice a week, oh boy. Twice a month we have a community karaoke program over there that has gospel singing, bluegrass. We have a lot of bluegrass bands come out, a lot of local people come out and sing. You know, things like that, That's we're more than just a fire department, you know. We're here for you to give you other things. And we've had a lot of good come out of that already. In fact, we had a young lady that was on the Grand Ole Opry recently. Uh, that was uh, in a part of our karaoke program that started out. A little lady by the name of Kayla Sloan. I think you, the judge got her at the uh, the center over there last year, didn't you? Met her, the Kayla Sloan girl 
Oh, she was incredible. But, you know, so many different things we do for this community, not just that. Anything that we can help you with, you come and find me. There's only one green in the phone book, and that's me, and it's always listed, okay? But thank all these people behind me, and they have been behind me from day one. Appreciate you all. Thanks. Let's have a special round of applause for your fire chief. <laughs> there are some opportunities in life that you don't really expect. In February, I became Deputy County Judge Executive, appointed by Judge Rutherford. And I didn't know the day that I would have a chance to honor a family or friend of such long standing as John Hires. The spirit that has invaded this place today reminds me of the spirit that was embodied and spoken about in 1968 by Senator Robert Kennedy. Some men see things as they are and ask why. And I dream of things that never were and ask why not. A person like that is now my privilege to introduce. John Hires. I had a speech all prepared. Judge took part of it. Ray took part of it. Keith got the rest of it. And Rick wiped it out. Sorry. <laughs> so I don't have anything to say. But I'm going to give you a brief history of this place. We started back in the mid-1960s when they first started building the road down Pond Creek. Up to that time, we always depended upon the Belfry Volunteer Fire Department for support in case a house in the community caught fire. But when they started building the four lane down Pond Creek, they couldn't get to us, we couldn't get to them. So we started to build a volunteer fire department. My wife, along with some other women of the community, went door to door and raised enough money that we bought an old truck from Ona, West Virginia Volunteer Fire Department, kept it in the Columbia Gas Building up here, right below the mouth of Meat House, right below where Rick lives, for years. We had four telephones in the community that rang the fire department number. Irvin Thacker, who was the fire chief at the time, had one at his service station, had one at his house, I had one at my house, Emily Crass had one at her house. If we got a call in the middle of the night, we had a list. The women would come out of the bed and they'd start calling certain people. We got a fire on Meat House. We got a fire on Dick's Fork. Here's the house number, whose house it is, etc. That's how we got started. Now we got 911 paging. We've got all this good stuff. And we owe all these people up here, as Rick has already said and everybody else has said too, our thanks. In about 1970, I guess it was, Wayne, uh, mid 70s or thereabout. You mentioned it a while ago. You bought, uh, with the county's help, about 10 fire trucks. We got one of them. Lord, we thought our ship had come in. And we took good care of it. And when we let it go, when, Rick, two years ago? It was still serviceable. And it was still running. But we thank the physical court for all of the time and support that they've put in to help this volunteer fire department. Our equipment. Our jaws of life all this stuff that we have that helps people all made possible by the community and by these people behind me county government still continues to support us all fire departments in the county has already been mentioned and we provide fire and not only fire but emergency care to local citizens and as already been mentioned by keith your fire insurance rates have gone down because of the rating of this volunteer fire department. State officials, it's already been alluded to, very supportive. Former Governor Patton, Senator Jones, Senator, uh, Representative Hall, other members of the East Kentucky delegation in Frankfurt have all been very helpful in supporting volunteer fire departments. The citizens of this community, you all. We get a lot of support from you all. You don't re probably think about it when you get that little card and you send me 35 bucks. But everybody in the community sending 35 bucks adds up to a whole lot of money. And it helps us pay the bills. Now, I'm going to give you one example. And I like, Rick and I both like to went through the roof. 
the power bill on this building last winter, one month, was almost $900 a month for electric heat. But we got to have it. But you all make it possible through your donations for us to meet those expenses. We have very good financial support from the community. We don't do roadblocks. We don't do hot dog sales. We do the one mailing a year, and that's it. Now, we've got plenty of people who volunteer their time at this, volunteer, at this fire department. And I stress the word volunteer. There are people, I think, in this community, and probably all communities in the county, that say, what do you all get out of that? How much do they pay you? Thanks is all we get, isn't it, Rick? That's all. Every person that works in this fire department, from the guys that go out on the trucks to the people behind the scenes, are all volunteers. And I want to mention one that was already mentioned by Judge Rutherford. We've had one fatality in this fire department since it was organized, and that was Raymond Adkins, whose wife, Lodine, lives up here on the hill was responding to a fire down in Big Creek and had a tragic accident right down here below the junction at Sydney and lost his life. Still a volunteer. Finally, and certainly not least, I'm going to mention somebody that's been mentioned before and he's, he deserves all the praise he can get, and that's Rick. You don't have any idea how many hours a week, a month, a year, that he spends right back there with those boys, these men, in training. He's all time on to me. We need money for this piece of equipment. We need money for that piece of equipment. And I say, Rick, can't we do without that just a little bit longer? Because I like to hang on to it. I guess that's the Smith in me. But Rick always sees that we have the best of equipment. He's always looking for ways to improve the department. And as far as I'm concerned, he, along with these volunteers, are this community's most valuable assets. Thank you, Rick, very much. And with that, I say thank you. In just a few moments after we conclude with our benediction, We'd like to invite everyone to go over to the community center where we'll have the ribbon cutting as soon as we're completed here. This is a great day for the people of Big Creek. It's a great day for the people of Pike County. And for our benediction, we'd like to call on Mike Smith Jr., who I think is with us today. Can we all bow our heads? Heavenly Eternal Father, God, we thank you, Lord, for this community, God, that you've blessed us to be a part of. Thank you, Father, for this area that we know is home. And thank you for Eastern Kentucky. We thank you for the community members, Lord, that we have that are willing to step up and to try and see something through whenever it's a need. And Father, we thank you for representatives, Lord, that will stand and try to help us back home. God, we just pray that you just always, Lord, keep your hand upon us. Lord, that we'd seek to help one another. Father, we know, God, that that's your true will, that we'd have love one for another. God, we ask you to just bless this little community. Father, I pray, God, that you'd bless, Lord, this center to grow and expand and serve many families to come. And Lord, we just ask you to just always, God, let us find it in our heart, a way that we can help one another. We thank you, God, that you've blessed, Lord, this uh, day and this ceremony. And God, we pray that you'd bless each one here Lord, on their journey back home, Father, with safety. Again, God, we thank you for everything you've given us. Most of all, we thank you for your dear son, Jesus, and his precious blood. For it's in his name we pray. Amen. So we'd like to invite everyone to come next door for the ribbon cutting. <laughs>